you're all welcome to join us for this Favoured District Council Planning Committee meeting on 26th of August. First of all, may I remind you of some of the domestic arrangements. Please ensure that the microphones and cameras are turned off when not in use. That you do not interrupt other speakers. If you wish to speak, points of order, declare and interest or request an in German, please use the hands up function on the task button and after you've spoken please remember to turn it off because you'll have to turn it off. <coughs> Members are reminded that they should not have alternative communication lines open other than Skype chats and that if you are contacted by a third party during an application you should bring this to the legal advisor's attention. That if you're attempting attending the meeting Sorry, that if you are attending the meeting to speak and persistently interrupt, you. you may be asked to leave. If members do lose connection to the meeting, that they must contact the member supports officer and despair as soon as possible. I would like to remind everyone present that this meeting will be broadcast live to the internet and will be capable of repeat viewing. The whole of the meeting will be recorded except where they are confidential or exempt items. If you make a representation to the meeting, you will be deemed by the council to have consented to being recorded. By entering this meeting as a speaker, you are also consenting to being recorded by the council and to the possible use of these sound recordings for webcasting and or training purposes. The council, members of the public and press may record, film, photograph or broadcast this meeting when the public and the press are not lawfully excluded. I'd now like to introduce you to the officers that we have today present. Mark Russell, Area Planning Manager. Jasmine Weinard, Case Officer. Andy Press, Planning Lawyer and Claire Philpott, Governance Officer. I'd now like to move to the agenda. I'm going to ask for uh, apologies and absence. Um, can we have the um, roll call for members, please? Claire? Thank you, Chair. Thank you. When I call your name, if you could just indicate your presence for me, please. Councillor Sue Ayres. Present. Councillor Melanie Barrett. Present. Councillor Peter Beer. Present. Councillor Dave Busby. Present. Councillor John Hinton. Present. Councillor Lee Jameson. Present. Councillor Mary McLaren. Present. Councillor Adrian Osborne. Present. Councillor Alison Owen. Present. Councillor Stephen Plum. Present. And we have apologies from Councillor Lee Parker. Yeah, thank you. I believe we still haven't got Councillor Jane Gould on the line. OK, we'll carry on until we get to that and I'll uh, stop you. again. We'll find out. Right. Uh, is there any uh, declarations by members? I'll take that as none. There's no hands up. Thank you. There's none to declare. Item three, to confirm the minutes of the meeting held on the 15th of July. These are to follow. Um, we don't know yet when they're going to be ready for being signed. So we'll move on to item four, which is to confirm the minutes of the meeting held on the 29th of July. These also are to follow. When approved, the minutes will be signed at the next a practical opportunity. Chair, apologies. I believe those minutes were in the tabled papers, were they not? Uh, I can see mine. Yes, I think I could see the moves over. It says here to follow, right? Um, so we have the minutes for the 29th of July. Um, so I need to ask if there's any points of accuracy needs to be clarified. Members? No. No? Can I have a proposal then, please? Well, sorry, Chair. Yep. 
to be honest, if they're in the table papers, I haven't read those yet. Uh, I think we only turned up, only saw them this morning. I assume that the table papers were the same as we've got here. There was no mention of being anything extra being added in them. Well, we can delay them until the next um, meeting, so it gives you time then to read them because, the, yes, they did come through rather late. Well, or, or if we could do them at the end of the meeting and just have a five minute break while we have a chance to read them. Uh, yes, I suppose that's possible. I think members, are you happy with that? Yes, no one's saying no, yes. so I'll take yeah. take that as yes. So we'll come back to that at the end of the meeting, okay? Thank you. So we'll move on to item number five to receive notification of any petitions. Um, Claire, do we have any? No, Chair, we do not. Thank you. Then we'll move to item six, site inspections. Uh, I have to go through this procedure. Yes. Officers, are there any site inspection requests? Um, Mark, you're muted. Yeah, no, none that I'm aware of, Chair, and still obviously the advice is not, not to do them. Thank you. Members, are there any site inspection requests? No, thank you. So we note all that, we'll move on. Then we've got to item seven. Now, this is where we need to know about the ward member, but I think the ward member can join us at any point during this because she's she doesn't have any voting rights. So, um, Claire, uh, ha Harriet, wasn't it? Have you managed to contact her? Uh, yes, Chair, I did contact her, but um, there was no response to her mobile phone. So um, right. I'm afraid we haven't got her Councillor Gould here at the moment. No. OK, well, we'll carry on. If she arrives, perhaps you would interrupt us and just tell us she's present. Um, but members, she doesn't have to be present uh, for this, but it's always useful as she is. Right. Um, then I'll move, invite the case officer, Jane Wynard, to introduce the application, which is on your paperwork before you. And if you've got the papers in front of you, it's on page 11. OK, Jasmine. Brilliant. Thank you, Chair, and good morning, members. Um, I'm just going to get the PowerPoint up, so just bear with me one second. Can everyone see that? No, we're just seeing a picture of you. At the, ah, yes, it's come up yeah. now. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so um, I'll be presenting DC 20.00701 to you today. Um, the site is Klondike Field, west of Bourne Hill in Worsted. Um, and it's a reserved matters application for the scale, layout, appearance and landscaping for the erection of 75 dwellings following outline permission DC 18 slash 00706. Um, hopefully you will have seen from the tabled papers as well, there have been some slight changes um, specifically regarding Suffolk County Council floods, um, whose responses from a holding objection is now changed. Um, and as part of this condition, 33 is no longer part of the description. So the site is shown outlined in red. Um, it's fully within the parish of Worsted and the A137 um, runs along the northwestern boundary. Um, so you'll see that there's the woodland south, um, which I'll discuss um, in a little while under the planning history. Uh, there are a row of houses along Bourne Hill um, and the site would be accessed via Bourne Terrace, which is uh, west of Bourne Hill as shown sort of by the star there. Um, there are, there's also um, Puddle Duck Kinder Care, um, which is a day nursery, which is located to the southwest corner of um, the proposed dwellings and the site, which you can see there as well. Uh, then you've got the, the site location plan shown, um, just shows the, the site outlined in red. Then you've got the planning history. So um, in December 2018, members were presented with a hybrid application. Um, so it formed, it had two parts. So there was an outline application for the erection of 75 dwellings, um, which included access to be considered. 
um, and then a full application, which was for the change of use from the private woodland to um, a suitable alternative natural green space community woodland. Um, so it's really the, the northern um, undeveloped field that we're looking at today. Um, so the principle has been established and the access has been approved. All other matters are being discussed today. Um, there was an NMA granted earlier this year, which slightly altered some technical details of the access, but nothing material to discuss there. And as I say, that's already been granted. Um, and the Section 106, um, and Section 106 was also signed as part of the um, outline and full application there, uh, which secured RAMS contributions, um, affordable housing mix and um, management of the community woodland. So the key issues are essentially the reserve matters, so appearance, scale, layout and the landscaping. And um, there are several conditions that are included as part of the um, development description, which are they, they could be dealt with under um, a discharge of conditions application, but these have quite a bit of overlap with the reserve matters. Um, so they have been included in the description for completeness and the details of which are therefore included in this application as well. Um, conditions four, six and seven of the outline are also um, conditions which the reserve matters has to accord with. So they relate to general conformity with um, a layout plan provided at outline, um, a no build zone. Um, which again was provided on a plan outline and uh, a cross section of the layout, which I'll come to in a little while as well. Um, and these will all be presented to you um, on my later slides. <coughs> so this is the first constraints map. So you've got uh, sort of three listed buildings um, to the east of the site. So you've got a uh, public house to the north, which is um, the Ostrich Inn public house. And then you've got to the south, um, Southeast, you've got um, numbers one and two, Bourne Hall, um, both of which are grade two listed. Um, you've also got a public right of way running north and west of the site as well. Uh, Jasmine, north -west, sorry you know. to interrupt you. Do you yeah. have a mouse? Can you just hover that over those areas you're talking about? Can you about? see my mouse at all? I can now. Ah, oh, brilliant. OK, because last time you couldn't see it. Brilliant. So you've got the um, grade two listed buildings here and here. And then you've got the, the public right of way sort of running um, northwest of the site along here. Um, and we've got the second um, constraints map, um, which I realise that there's quite a lot on here. Primarily, um, the sort of thing to note is that there's a uh, part of the site to the north is, it, is within flood zone two. Um, so that's just here. It's a very small sort of slither to the north. Um, you've then got some several constraints sort of around the site, but the one that constrains, partially constrains the site is this flood zone here. Right. Um, so I've got some photos for you as well. So the top two are taken along Bourne Hill. Um, so you can see that the access is here. Um, this access runs um, just along here towards the site um, and that's Bourne Terrace. This would be upgraded as part of the outline application and as I say access has already been approved. Um, then you've got the, the dwellings you can see are set at a slightly higher level than actually Bourne um, Hill itself and the land sort of levels um, just to the west of um, these dwellings to the rear as well. Um, the bottom two um, photos here show the rear elevations of the dwellings um, along Bourne Hill. So again, you can see that there's a, a sort of mixture of different fencing, um, some natural screening from um, the trees and also um, You've, you've got some slightly more exposed um, dwellings as well. There are also a mixture of bungalows, chalet bungalows and two storey dwellings. But again, I'll explain that in a little bit more detail later on. Um, 
in terms of where I was standing to take these photos, um, I was standing far closer um, to the, the dwellings, the existing dwellings than the proposed dwellings would be. So that's, pro pro bleh, that's probably something just to bear in mind. Um, so these are again photos, these are actually of the site now. So I was standing along this sort of informal path here um, when taking the photos of the, the rear elevations of the existing dwellings which are just located to the east. Um, this again, you can see that the site slightly falls um, towards the west and the north there, um, but it's slightly more even towards the east. Um, again, this bit is the access going down and would sort of come in to the site as well. And then this is the western, um, well, southwestern boundary, and this would be um, Puddle Duck Kinder Care, which is the, is the day nursery. So that's the existing boundary there. Mm -hmm. um, so the site layout that was on the outline, um, there, are, there are two that I'll sort of show you today. These two were the ones that were included under conditions on the outline. So there's a no build area um, to the northwest side of the site. Um, and as part of condition six, this had to, um, any reserve matters that come forward had to make sure that there wasn't any building within this area. Similar sort of principle as well with this site layout plan. So again, this was on the outline, so not including the reserve matters, but on the outline. And condition four stated that this, uh, that any reserve matters that come forward also have to be in general conformity with this layout as well. So this is the site layout that's been proposed. Um, there are 22 dwellings per hectare and um, I've shown you some separation distances just to the side here. So this is sort of the maximum separation distance and the minimum. Um, this is between the uh, nearest elevation to the boundary and then also the nearest elevation to the rear elevation of the existing dwellings as well. So you can get an idea of the separation distances there. Um, Oh, just one there. Okay, so you've then got the site um, layout plans side by side. So this is firstly to do with condition six. So I'm sure you can agree that there is this no build area which is secured via condition on the outline and that has been adhered to um, and the reserve matters is in accordance with that. The same is then shown for general conformity with the layout on this. Um, Good morning, Councillor Gould. It's Henry Holloway from Beba Miss Suffolk Community Services. Um, I'm just checking. So the, the condition for um, is obviously for the, the general conformity with the layout. And again, um, you can see on the reserve matters that it is in general conformity with this layout. So the housing mix. Um, is so that the affordable housing mix has been secured by the section 106 um, and the open market mix again um, there was nothing on the outline or in the section 106 to indicate what this mix should be um, so this is what's been proposed um, in terms of I'll, again I'll discuss this in some of my later slides to do with the extent of bungalows um, that was indicated at outline. Uh, we don't currently have a policy um, for the extent that bungalows should be provided on site and the nearest thing we have to it is our emerging joint local plan policy LP06 um, which indicates you know it's a direction of travel but it indicates that um, sites should accommodate three percent bungalows um, and in to, to this end the um, reserve matters does provide that three percent but that's something for, for members to sort of bear in mind um, so this is the indicative story heights that were shown to you um, at outline so there are 16 um, bungalows here specifically along um, the western boundary and the eastern boundary um, and the, the rest were two-storey with some one and a half storey um, garages as well. 
So this is the story heights that have been proposed under the Reserve Matters application. So you've got the three bungalows here and here. You've then got a partially three storey apartment block and uh, the rest of the dwellings are two storeys with single storey garages. Um, so what I've shown here um, is the neighbouring dwelling heights. Um, so you've got a mixture, as I said earlier, of bungalows, chalet bungalows and two storey dwellings. Um, as I indicated earlier, there is a significant separation distance, both um, the minimum, which is sort of to the north here, um, which only gets larger as you go to the south. Um, in terms of the to this end, there would be no uh, detrimental impact on overlooking or loss of privacy to the dwellings here. So in terms of the lack of bungalows along the eastern boundary, um, officers don't believe that there is any sort of detrimental impact on um, residential amenity of neighbouring dwellings that, are exi uh, that exist along Bourne Hill. Um, so this is the affordable housing plan. Um, which shows the uh, affordable rent units in blue and the shared ownership in red. Um, both, so there are 26 affordable dwellings um, as per the section 106. Um, they are not pepper potted. However, they would be built in the second phase um, of the development after the construction of the spine road. Um, therefore, there is public benefit through the early delivery of these. Um, so this is just to, I'll go through the affordable dwellings um, and then I'll also go through the open market dwellings on the following slides, just to sort of show you that they are completely tenure blind. Um, so these are the, the two storey dwellings. So you've got two bedrooms and three bedrooms. And you've got the bungalows, so the two bedroom, they're both two bedroom, but one is for three people, the other's four people. And you've got the affordable apartments. Um, so again, these are a mixture of one and two bedrooms. And then the open market. So these are the larger um, of the two story dwellings. So these are both four bedrooms. Then you've got the three bedrooms semi-detached there. Um, two bedrooms, which again, you should note that these are very, very similar to the affordable housing and they are completely tenure blind. Um, and then we've got the materials here. Um, so there's a, a mixture of materials. And again, in terms of ensuring the affordables over here are tenure blind, you can see that they have very similar materials to the rest and it's all sort of um, interspersed with the, the same materials. Um, so there's three different bricks um, between red and cream bricks, which are all um, traditional to Suffolk. And you've also got the um, two different roof tiles. They are both um, concrete, but they are both to imitate slate and plain tiles, which again are um, traditional Suffolk um, materials. And you've got some weatherboarding as well, sort of dotted around, shown by the pink dots. Um, which again breaks down the street scenes, which I'll show you now. So they are very visually attractive street scenes. Um, the different architectural features um, throughout, there's not any sort of uniform appearance. And again, you can see that there's no deterioration as you come off of the spine road further into the estates. Um, they all sort of retain that same sense of place. So this is the parking layout. Um, there are 185 spaces in total, including 19 visitor spaces, which are shown um, in the orange brown color. So they're sort of along here and here. Um, you've got the, the green shows the on plot parking provision, and there is further provision included in the um, garages as well. Cycle storage is either provided in the garage or in sheds in gardens, and they're shown by the blue dots here. Um, there are some small matters that are being discussed and clarified with Suffolk County Council Highways at the minute, and these relate primarily to conditions 16 and 18 of the outline. Um, it's important to note that highways don't raise any objection to the reserve matters application, though. 
So that's just something to bear in mind. Um, so we've got the boundary treatments here. So there's a mixture of brick walls, um, close bordered fencing, large lap fencing. Um, so along the western boundary, you've got um, a close bordered fence. It's one, they're all 1.8 metres. Um, and again, you've got a 1.8 close, 1.8 metre close bordered fence um, along the eastern boundary as well. Um, and combined with the landscaping, which I'll show you on the next slide, um, there is it's considered that there is significant and sufficient screening along both of these um, sensitive boundaries. Um, also to the western, um, the northwestern boundary with the A137, um, there's an existing post and rail fence and under condition 18, which again is still being discussed with Suffolk County Council Highways, um, they're ensuring that there's clarification and um, sufficient measures that are in place to ensure that no one enters the A137. Um, so that's, again, quite important to note. Um, so this is the landscaping master plan that's been provided. Um, some of the specific details are being considered and amended under the conditions. Um, place services landscaping raise no objection to this overall strategy, do, strategy though. Um, so in terms of there, there will be some very, very slight um, amendments and discussions to be had there. But I think the, the majority of this landscaping scheme um, has now been um, agreed with them and they're, they're happy with it. And again, you can see that there's some native hedgerow along the western boundary and trees along the eastern boundary, which again ensures that the existing uh, business and dwellings over here to the west and the existing dwellings over to the east are sufficiently separated and screened as well, um, ensuring that, again there is no overlooking or loss of privacy um, to any residential amenity there. Um, it's also, as you can see, heavily landscaped. There's a lot of public open space um, and a lot of native hedgerows, native trees. Um, there's also two sort of pathways um, outside of the, the main estate road. So you've got a main path that comes along sort of the northwestern boundary here. And again, a, a gravel pathway going along the eastern boundary, which link to go towards um, the north in towards Ipswich and other natural green infrastructure elsewhere as well. Um, so the recommendation is that the reserve matters app um, application is granted alongside the um, conditions that have been noted in the description, uh, save for conditions 16 and 18, details of which are being finalised currently. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, right, I'll see whether any members got any points of clarification that they'd like to put to you. I've just got one. Can you just confirm that um, when the outline was put forward, the indicative plans show 16 bungalows, I think you said, and we're now down to three. Is that correct? Yes, that is correct. Yeah. Thank you. Members, have you got any points of clarification you, you wish to have from the officers? Uh, yes, I've got Councillor Hinton, followed by Councillor Ayres and then Councillor Osborne. Councillor yeah. Hinton? Yes, a couple of points. On uh, page 11 of the of the papers, mm -hmm. it talks about description of development, application for approval of reserve matters following outline approval DC 18 stroke 00706. Outline planning application access to be considered. Uh, we then look at page 15, where there appear to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven matters re regarding conditions, including access, I assume, because he doesn't actually mention the access in there, uh, which have been approved under delegated authority. So why is this coming back to us if all the decisions have already been made? Um, Can you help out, Jasmine or Mark? So in terms of so the access was considered under the outline application um, under this reserve matters application, the access isn't being considered. Um, I've purely just sort of gone through it. So, you know, that that has already been approved and that's where the access is um, in terms of there was an NMA granted, um, which dealt with some very, very small technical details that had changed. 
under this application there is no um there's no consideration of any changes to the access the only thing that we're looking at um from a highways perspective is is really the the parking um and the parking layout and that's really it um does that clarify or have you got some not more I'm, I'm not sure that no. actually answers john's question but john can, can you yeah, comment? Not, not really because um when was the access actually approved and by who? So the access would have been granted in December 2018 under the outline application because it was a matter of consideration members. at that point. Yes, but by members. members. Right, yep. John, you're not, you're, you're, I'm sorry. Here. Yep. The the history doesn't seem to show that, which is a bit confusing, um, because the the reason behind my questions on this is because mm. when we look at further on in the papers, when I can find it again, because unfortunately we get rather a lot of paper with these things. Um, doo -doo -doo, I will find it because I put a formal question in. Yeah, on page six, it says delegation to the chief act, acting chief planning officer, delegated powers under minute number forty eight. A of the council dated the 19th of October 2014. Well, I would include power to determine the conditions to be imposed upon and grant any grant of planning permission, etc., etc., etc. Well, the problem with that, of course, is that 2004, most councillors on this committee weren't even members of the council. Since then, we've had three local plans, uh, three local uh, chief executives, and I think four uh, heads of planning. Uh, isn't it about time that uh, councillors were asked to look at these delegated powers and decide just what they want to give? Because at the moment, I don't know what the delegated powers are that the officers have got are. Uh, and consequently, we have no control over what is happening on this planning process. And yet we as a committee are the quasi-legal um, enforcement part of the council's planning policy. I, I think that's the second part to your question, but that's a very fair point. Um, Mark, uh, can you help on here? Because I think certainly the second part of John's um, comments may be something that we need to take away and look at. Um, but uh, so there's like two parts there. But I'm still concerned that the answer that he wanted on the first part hasn't been completely satisfied. I, I, I mean, let, let me unpick this. Obviously, yeah. Council Linton has made some uh, comments about the scheme of delegation. Obviously, that's that's out okay. with our consideration today and that's one to okay. take away um the, the the hard facts are that the access was approved by committee in december mm. 2018 i'm just looking at the resolution here to check that i'm not going to mislead you on this um so the recommendation was that permission be granted um subject on the outline that the chief planning officer be authorised to grant outline planning permission subject to conditions including and then there was a set of conditions so that that was a resolution in December 2018 um following committee mm -hmm. thank thank you so and I think the second part we need where to is that in the away. papers Mr Chairman sorry where is that in the actual papers uh I don't know whether the minutes for the last meeting uh, are quoted anywhere in this report Ken Jesmond or well, that would have been that would have been a 2018 mi uh, minute, mm -hmm. um, but where where does it say in the planning for history, for instance, just what the grant of planning permission actually? Um, I think at the top of the report, unless I've got this wrong, it does say um, application for approval of reserve matters follow an outline approval, uh, uh, DC stroke 180706. Yeah. Uh, application is that the one you're referring to it says hybrid application outline planning application brackets access to be considered erection of 75 dwellings etc uh decision granted 7th of the 8th 2019 which was obviously the 106 mm -hmm. after committee in december so i mean i take the point that some more details would have been useful for for the councillor but it, it does it does say there what was granted back in 2018 yeah. 19. right and i think the second part uh, Councillor Hinton will take away and I'll ask officers to look at that point uh, and I think I'll also pass it on to the Cabinet Member for Plan and Councillor Clive Arfi to see if we, if we can um, revisit this. Okay. Uh, any other? Oh yes, I've got uh, next uh, Councillor Ayres. 
Thank you very much, Chair. Um, and thank you for that presentation, Jasmine. I found it really quite good. Um, can I just ask, on slide 32, about the gravel um, pathway, having taught special needs for years and pushed an awful lot of wheelchairs, um, maybe gravel is not always so, um, you know, point. could it not be something else? Just a point. That's a very good point. Jasmine? Uh, yeah, so um, I suppose in terms of the, the landscaping scheme, that's something that our place services landscaping team would be looking into. Um, it might be something um, to bring to the developer's attention. Mm. Um, I suppose that's something that we can possibly take away. Um, I, I think, um, sorry to interrupt, but I think um, Councillor Ayres, perhaps um, the applicant I think is present, uh, you could put that question to them. Okay. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Osborne. Yeah, thank you, Mr Chairman. Uh, uh, the the question really is about the um, uh, apartment block, the three-storey apartment block. I just wanted to know if Jasmine could uh, determine what height the uh, build is going to be on. Is that the lowest point of the site or is that quite a high point of the site? please um it's sort of towards so it'd be a lower point of the site if i just get up some of the street scenes i believe they were on there so that's the apartment block there if that sort of helps um as you can see it's slightly Drop at down. a lower level um than the neighboring dwellings so these would be two-story and that's obviously the three-story um and there isn't a huge difference um in the height there right okay thank you thank you Right, now a points of clarification. Right. Uh, excuse me, Chairman. Yes, could I just... Sorry, who's that? It's Melanie Barrett. Oh, right, sorry. Oh, yes, I'd say you're, you're in a different place. Your hands come up on my screen now. Um, yep. Councillor Barrett? Yes, thank you. Jasmine, could you just show us the slide again where it shows the location of the garages? Um, cause, um, Parking layout? It might be, yes. So... Uh, can you just confirm? Is the is there some areas at the ends of those those sort of turnings um, where there's um, just a uh, a garage area that's um, not adjacent to the house, but in a, a separate area? Um. So on the eastern side, I was just looking at that area where there's a yeah. a turning. Hammerhead. Sort of here. Yeah, Hammerhead. That's the. Yeah, that's Hammerhead. The, yeah. Or on the the eastern side, um, just but that might be the same also. Um, are they parking blocks or are they garages? Um. So the the green shows these are parking um on plot parking bays. So the yellow oh, is where right. the garages are. Right. Okay. So there's more parking bays than there is garage parking. Uh, yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, any other people, members, with points of clarification? No. Thank you. Then we'll move on. We have public speakers now. Uh, we have the representative from the parish council. That's Robin Coates. You, sir, have three minutes in which to address the committee. When you're ready. Um, Claire, you'll do the timing, please. Yes, Chair, I will do. Thank you. Uh, good morning. Well, thank you for the opportunity to speak to you today on behalf of the residents of Worsted. Worsted Parish Council and residents believe the revised site, site design submitted as part of the reserve matters does not comply with condition four of the outline planning permission granted by this committee in August 2019. When Pigeon Worsted designed the original site plan, they made much of the fact that the new houses to be built behind the existing homes on Bournes Hill would be stored to minimise the impact on residents. This aspect was included in the design layout put forward as part of the outline planning permission and was reflected in the original development having 17 bungalows as part of the 75 homes. I have rechecked that. I still believe it's 17 and not 16. Uh, Worsted Parish Council and the residents believe that the importance of this feature was recognised by the planning officer and this committee, so included in condition four of the outline approval, which states that any subsequent reserve matter applications 
shall be in general conformity with the layout set out on the plan titled Overall Sketch Layout 01. However, the reserve matter submission before you today from Bellway has reduced the number of bungalows in the development from 17 down to three, and consequently the new houses to be constructed behind the existing Bourne Hill homes will be two-storey rather than single-storey bungalows. When Bellway were asked why this aspect has changed, the parish council were advised that Bellway do not build bungalows, although rather confusingly they are prepared to build the three bungalows on this site, just not the full complement of 17 as per the original design. Worsted Parish Council and residents believe this is a material change and that the reserved matters are no longer in general conformity with the original submission. And as such, it is non-compliant with both the letter and the spirit of the conditions of the original outline permission. We therefore request that the planning committee compel Bellway to comply with the outline condition and reinstate the bungalows on the plots to the rear of the existing homes on Bourne Hill. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much for that. Um, right. Uh, I'll see whether there's any questions to you. Um, I've got one uh, to start. Um, you're saying 17 and not 16. OK, that's a fair comment. Um, so when you saw the outline uh, plan and application, and bearing in mind it was indicative, um, you were of the impression there was 16, possibly 17 bungalows. Is, is that correct? Um, well, I've recounted them on the drawing whilst you were talking earlier, whilst you were going through the presentation, uh, and the documentation I have is definitely 17. Right. I also believe in the papers that were submitted to your committee um, that in one section, the planning officer's comments were that the change was from 17 to, to 3. So yep. I, I do believe that's correct, uh, unless there's been an amendment I'm unaware of. No. And you did also state August 2019. Uh, something that they come back to us in August 2019. Uh, I took the date off, um, uh, forgive me, I can't remember Isabel's family name, but um, the, the, the senior planning officer approval, uh, which was dated, I thought August 2019. Right, I'll get I'll get our officers to check that. Mark, perhaps you can look into that. that he, there was reference from this uh, parish council that we'd approved something in August 2019 or something was dated 2019. I need I you to clarify that. Um, I understand that might be the section 106 um, date. Um, I think Jas actually Jasmine may be able to answer that. Jasmine, can you come come in there? Yeah, so um, I believe that the committee um, approved it in December 2018. That's correct. Um, the, the section 106 date and the date that the permission was actually um, granted would have been in August 2019. Oh, right, that, that's right. That's, that's fine. We're clear now. We're talking of the same thing. Right. Members, uh, no questions to the parish council? Yes. Councillor Busby. Thank you, Chair. I've got the uh, layout that was approved, the outline layout that was approved, and there's actually 16 bungalows. I think there's uh, 13 open market and three um, affordable housing. So that's just to clarify that point up. And um, I just say welcome to Robin again. It obviously feels like it's on the planning committee, bearing in mind we've done nothing but worsted for the last three months. Thank you very much, Councillor Busby. Any other comments, members? Sorry, any other questions to um, Mr Coates? No? Thank you very much. We'll move on. Thank you. Uh, right. We don't have an objector or supporter, so I now ask the agent to speak, Sarah Conwell. You have three minutes in which to address the committee. When you're ready. Thank you. Good morning, members, and thank you for allowing me to speak. I am the planner for Bellway Homes in respect to the reserve matters application for Klondike Field. I would like to thank officers for their report and positive recommendation for the reserve matters application, which we fully support. Bellway Homes are the country's fourth largest house builder. We are one of the number one five star house builders in the country and the Essex division builds over 900 homes per year. Bellway acquired the site in 2019 in December following the grant of outline plan permission and we have worked positively with officers for nearly a year through both the pre-application discussions and the determination period. The proposals respond positively to the parameters set by the outline plan permission. For example, we have respected the no-build zone to the northern section of the site. We've enhanced the pedestrian routes through the site. 
we've created a landscape buffer along the eastern boundary with a 1.8 metre high fence and extensive tree planting and we've enhanced the woodland to the south of the site to create safer paths and dedicated wildlife areas. Burway are committed to delivering this scheme as soon as possible with the social housing being provided on as early as possible within the build process ahead of the timing requirements and triggers within the 106. In summary, your officers have concluded that the proposals are acceptable in planning terms, therefore respectfully request that the application be approved in accordance with your officers' recommendations. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much. I was just there if there's any questions for you from members. Uh, I've got one. Uh, there was a comment from the parish council that uh, you have informed them that you do not build bungalows. Bearing in mind that uh, most, uh, well certainly the parish council and I and perhaps other members were, were under the impression the indicative um, plans that were put forward for um, outline did show more bungalows, possibly 16 or 17. Uh, you were down to three. What's what's your answer to that? I mean, it's certainly misleading. Misleading. Um, we acquired the site from Pigeon. They had obviously negotiated right. with with the planning officers and and the parish. Um, when we met with the uh, the council, uh, given the setbacks on the eastern boundary and the fact that the master plan wasn't actually conditioned as to be uh, an indicative master plan, it's just generally in accordance with. Um, so there wasn't anything set in stone with the bungalows. It was felt that it wasn't something that, given the, the, the uh, adjacent boundaries and the distances between the houses, it wasn't something that was uh, required for immunity issues. Um, Generally, Bellway don't build bungalows. There's the odd occasion where we do, particularly for the social. Um, we just feel that it's it's something that that the residents don't generally want. We can't, it's very hard to sell them, um, and people want to build up. Um, whenever you get a bungalow, they just want to go into the roof, and then they don't like it when you take away that right to do that through permitted development rights being excluded. So. Thank you very much. So just to be clear, you acquired the site from Pigeon. It wasn't your your outline. Um, no. No. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Right, members, I've got some hands up. I've got Councillor Hinton, followed by Councillor Owen, and followed by Councillor Osborne. We'll take Councillor Hinton. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just a quick question on the western boundary. Uh, during the officer's presentation, we heard that there was some negotiation with the county councillors to a a barrier stroke fencing along the line of the 137 um, to prevent access through there. Bearing in mind that at the last meeting we gave permission for a fast food outlet at the top of Bourne Hill there, which obviously might provide a, an attraction to the people on this the, the development. Uh, what are you proposing to put along there that will stop people from, from accessing the 137? Um, you're, perhaps you could un unmute. We cannot hear you. Sorry, sorry. Along the A A137, um, there is the post and rail fence. There's also uh, existing vegetation. We'll be improving that vegetation and, and patching up the, the hedge, any loss of hedgerow that there is in there. Um, there is a, a big ditch that goes down and then it comes back up again. So there's quite an extensive area between the back of our site and the A137 anyway. Um, and the fact that we are dedicating a path along the eastern boundary and people can use that path now as opposed to trying to cut through any kind of gap in a hedgerow. Um, but we obviously we can't we can't cut it off because it's a public uh, right of way. So we're, we're limited to what we can do, but we can discourage people from using it by planting and a, and a post and rail fence. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Osborne. Oh, no, sorry, no, Councillor Owen. Councillor Owen was next. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Um, just a quick question. Um, has the apartment blocks got um, a shared outside space for them to hang their washing and things like that? Uh, there will be some outside space, yeah. I don't know about washing lines and things like that, but yeah, there is a meeting space from surrounding the block. Thank you. Councillor Osborne. Councillor Osborne. Thanks. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Yeah. Um, just two two questions, really, that uh, I would like uh, 
the agent to uh, respond to. Um, the commencement time limit, ha uh, has a time been proposed for, for the start of this commencement of this uh, site? Uh, we're literally gearing up at the moment, so we're obviously been waiting for planning permission, but we've, we've got all the work and drawings done. It's literally a case of we would be on site in September. Thank you. And the second one is um, the um, landscape uh, and management plan. Now, I, t I, I take it that any of the any of the uh, management of the site in terms of open space and stuff will be the responsibility of the residents. Am I, am I correct on that? And therefore, there will be a, uh, a maintenance uh, set up. Um, management charge will, will have to be paid for by by contributions from the uh, residents correct that's correct yeah there will be a management company set up which we've already set up actually um and yeah all the residents will pay into that and that will manage the on-site um landscaping on that northern section what's to be determined is uh whether or not they would also pay for um the, the woodland on it or yet or whether the council will take that or, or so on but for the actual northern area yes it'll be a residence company thank you thank you councillor ayres thank you chair um as you suggested chair um can i ask about the gravel um footpath that would be it's on slide um 32 um because i it's very difficult to push wheelchairs or for push chairs um maybe that could be reconsidered and second question is would any of the homes that are being built be homes for life thank you um, with regards to the uh, the footpath, uh, that is something that we're discussing at the moment with Chris Fish and Highways um, and the uh, Public Right Way Officer. Um, but there will be a, a, a plastic membrane that's got that, the holes in it, and then the gravel goes into that, all different types of gravel and sizes, so that it won't wash away. It's not just con compacted gravel, it's within the, um, the, the plastic membrane. So it, it's got a, a lifespan of sort of 20, 30 years. So, yeah, that's the idea. Uh, building for lifetime homes I don't believe that we are um, but I, I don't believe that's a requirement at the moment anyway because that's kind of fallen foul of, of building regulations now so I think building regulations sort of covered uh, lifetime homes anyway. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Busby. Thank you. Yeah. Um, did you consider doing a housing survey before you determine what mix you're going to have for the open market? Uh, no, that's not something that we generally do. No, it's just it's just gauging from uh, previous experience in the area and um, speaking to estate agents and so on. Well, because every every housing survey that we've done or has been done in our area shows that what is required is predominantly two bedroom houses, and you've got no, uh, in fact over ninety percent of the open market are three or four. Mm. Do you think that's not reflecting on the requirements of the area? Uh, that was what was we determined would be to, would be um, needed at the time. Yeah. Right, but if you didn't do the housing survey, how did you know what it was needed? I, I from the, from the estate agents, that signed, Councillor Busby. They uh, have the done other, one. The we've other. also we've also got a site in um, in Hawley uh, that we've done a lot of market research for that area as well, um, and another site in Whitton that we've done market research for for that area so it's it's a general Suffolk patch that um that we determined that there is a need for two beds but generally it's the larger houses that people are aspiring to uh particularly now with Covid people we're finding that people want to move out further away from from London where it's cheaper um and they can afford to do that in a, a larger property and they don't need to be right next to train station so it has changed dramatically in the last six months and there's also an element of people want to be able to work at home a lot more so we're finding that the house types are changing slightly and that we're having to provide more sort of studies and so on or, or a separate dining room so they can uh, work there thank you good answer thinking on your feet <laughs> um, <laughs> and so the, Busby, any more yeah the you mentioned about the public right of way uh, to stop people going onto the a137 surely it's not a public right of way you could you could fence off the uh off the development from the road no we can't it's a public right of way that that northern section not not along the eastern boundary that's just within our site no, but no. at the very 
very top, um, it does cross over the A137 and that part is the public right of way part. Um, so there isn't anything we can do to stop people crossing over the A137 if they want that, because that is a public right of way going across that road, which is a start of me. Uh, you say the top, do you mean the most southern part or the most the northern part? The very northern part. Okay, well. So right. as, it, as it sort of goes around into the strand. Yeah. Um, that then. It, there is a right way Instead down. of going right into the strand, it goes left across into, uh, effectively across the road. Um, and that area there, we, we can't cut that off. Thank you. I think you're right. I want to cancel it, yeah. Thank Any you. others, Councillor Busby? No. Well, I'll move on then as Councillor McLaren. Thank you, Chair. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, yes. Um, Sarah, I'm interested in the design of the flats. Um, as there's a very limited amount of bungalows, what um, are they going? these flats going to offer for people with a disability, recognising that is an all age thing, it's not just about older people? What um, emphasis on disability is going to be and what facilities in this block of flats? Um, well, they're not for the general public. They're they're for the affordable housing. So it's to meet it's it's the requirements within a 106. So it has to meet the sizes that's within the 106 for for those flats for the one and two bed flats in there. Um, so it's whatever the the housing association will need, and they've been designed according to that. Uh, the sort of one bed two person or two bed four person and so on. Um, so it's to meet their requirements, and they've got very strict requirements as to, as to what they require. Right. It's not sort of general public. Oh, right. I didn't realise that disability, not quite hold on. disability was different for different people, but... Um... <laughs> no, but the, but the Housing Association will have their own requirements to make sure they're, they're, they're fit for purpose for, for whatever needs they need. And will they input, then, the design of the flats? Uh, they, well, built. We, yes, to a certain element, we will... What's been approved will be built, but there are tweaks. You have to have an, we have an agreement with the, the HA provider, and if they want certain elements, then that will be negotiated through the, the more design process as it gets passed off to them and, um, and they get signed off and, and given over to them. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much, Chairman. Thank you. Uh, we have Councillor uh, Jameson. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, could you tell me what environmental sustainability measures you're planning to put in place? Um, there's, uh, within the northern section of the site, there's extensive tree planting, um, there's new hedgerows to create um, new wildlife within there, there's hedgehog holes within the, um, uh, the fences, there's pollinator grassland to encourage all the bees, um, there's obviously all the planting on the northern section and then within the southern parcel, which is the woodland, um, we're still liaising with um, place services with regards to that, but there will be extensive areas that will be closed off for um, ecological monitoring and enhancements of ecological areas through yeah. that. So you can't, the paths won't be going through there so people to disturb them. As relates to the biodiversity, but what, what about the properties themselves? In what sense? In terms of um, no, P PV. Um, no, there, is, there isn't that. There's, no. there's obviously, um, there is a condition, I think it's condition 30 that we might have signed off already that's to do with the um, uh, sustainability of the building, but that's just mainly through kind of building regulations and so on that we need to encourage the kind of the, the solar. Um, uh, retention and so on within the buildings, but but there's no PV panels now. Um, um, uh, um, what sort of uh, just just general um, building regs then, basically, yeah. 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 Okay. Thank you, uh, Councillor Osborne. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, uh, just uh, one uh, question that I failed to, um, I forgot to ask. The um, affordable housing and um, the materials that are going to be used, I can I have the assurance that they will not look any different to the houses that they are going to construct uh, uh, when the materials are actually approved. 
So in other words, um, they will not look uh, uh, different to, to the uh, rest of the site. Please. No, the, the materials are used throughout. We haven't um, we haven't allocated a certain area within the social that gets different. It's it's just throughout. It's just a blanket across with with the um, with the uh, bricks and the roof tiles. It's just a blanket across, so they shouldn't look any different. They're just yeah. That's the idea. Thank you, Councillor Plum. Thank you, Chair. Um, just a very quick question: If we were minded to approve this, but insisted that the um, affordable housing is pepper potted through the site what would your reaction be um my reaction is that we've spent the last year negotiating with the planning officers the, the layout of this scheme it's taken a lot of time to to get to the point we're at if we start changing where the location of the affordable is if you look at the houses it's very hard to just try and pick some up and put them somewhere else um it's it's going to be a whole new replan of, of the whole scheme, which is going to take even longer to get through, even more money, even more timescales. It's going to be, you know, starting from scratch again, effectively, and, and redesigning it all. Um, there may be an element of we can pick a few units up and put them somewhere else, but we're talking about one or two, really. Um, nothing generally that's, that's going to be, otherwise it's going to be a whole scale redesign of the, of the layout. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Councillor Barrett. Thank you. Um, just wondered um, if all the properties will be able to um, put their bins behind their properties by side gates and, and so on. Or are yeah. They will be able to... yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I don't think there's any other hands up. So I'm assuming that everyone's asked the questions that wanted to. So thank you very much. Um, to to you, we'll now move on. I'll now ask the board member to speak, Councillor Gold. Are you with us? Gold, sorry. Chair, we have not had any reply from Councillor Gold. We have left messages, but we no. haven't had a reply. Okay, then members will have to move on. Um, do do you, do you want to take a, a five minute comfort break just to see whether we do get her and? Um, that yes, I'm seeing some nods. M members, we'll we'll meet back at 20 to 11. So you've got about seven minutes, um, a comfort break, and that will just give the opportunity to see if we can get Councillor Gold. And if she's not there when we come back, then we'll carry on without her. Okay. Thank you. So please don't discuss this in the meantime. Thank you.
Uh, welcome back, members. Um, I think uh, we're all present, but I'm going to ask for a roll call. You'll get an update on the um, board member, and um, Councillor Busby wants to put a question to the um, agent, which I will just go back and allow that question to be asked. Okay. Um, first of all, can you do the roll call, um, please? Thank you, Chair. Councillor Suez? Present. Councillor Peter Beer? Present. Councillor Dave Busby? Present. Councillor John Hinton? Present. Councillor Lee Jameson? Present. Councillor Mary McLaren? Councillor McLaren, are you with us or on mute? Sorry, I was having difficulty. Okay, no problem, I'm thank present. you. <laughs> Councillor Adrian Osborne? Present. Councillor Alison Owen? Present. Councillor Stephen Plum? Present. And Councillor Barrett? Councillor Melanie Barrett, I do apologise. I'm here. Thank you. Um, we have had apologies sent now from Councillor Gould. She will not be joining us, Chair. Thank you. Right, members, I uh, have had a request from Councillor Busby. He, he wishes to put a question that he wanted to put to the agent. Uh, she's agreed to answer it. So, Councillor Busby, would you like to put your question before we move on? Well, actually, it's a question in kind of two parts, really. The first one is, does uh, the applicant or the agents uh, ask for or have a copy of our latest consultation document on the local plan? Uh, I don't have a copy. I would gain access to it via your online website. So you, you would have read the relevant policies. Uh, Mark, are you still there? Because the question to you is, would we send them uh, a copy of the relevant policies? Uh, no, not, not as a matter of rope, we wouldn't, no. I mean, no. unless she's on our list of consultees for such a document, then, then no. So we don't send each applicant a copy of the... The, the current policies? Well, no, no we don't. No, I we expect them to have uh, made that in investigation themselves. Okay. Right. Okay, thank you very much. We'll now move on. Uh, so as Councillor Gold is not present, um, we're now into debate. So um, again, I'd ask you to put your hands up if you wish to speak. But I'll start the meeting by going to Councillor Ayres first to see if she wants to take part in the debate. Councillor Ayres. Uh, not at the moment, thank you, Chairman. Thank you. Um, anybody else? No. There's no hands up. Who'd like to start? Uh, somebody's hand is raised. Uh, um, Councillor McLaren. Councillor McLaren, your hand is up and you're muted. I know. Lovely. Right, sorry. Sorry. Right. <laughs> the joys of technology. <laughs> yes. Um, as a newer member of the planning committee, I would like some explanation from either Ian or Mark regarding this uh, statement by Bellway that they bought the land from Pigeon, and Pigeon had, had achieved the outline planning permission. Can somebody explain why the requirement of the outline planning permission was not transferred to Bellway? Jasmine or Mark? I think it might be Mark. Uh, th thank, thanks, Chair. Um, I think actually somebody might be showing their screen, so I'm going to get a double display here. But any, anyway, I'll, I'll carry on. Um, the, the, the question is, was well, what is the question? Sorry. I mean, obviously, there's an outline planning permission um, and it and its obligations were then passed to the inheritor in title, which in this case is Bellway. Right. That's what happened. That is what happened. So I don't understand what the question is. Sorry, Councillor, could you? Yeah, no, sorry. It was just that um, Sarah said they, they purchased from Pigeon, but we'd had this discussion at the outset about the number of bungalows and how it had been changed. Yeah, okay. And I just didn't understand... I, I thought perhaps there would be just an automatic transfer. Oh, that there is. Yes, understood. Yeah, I, th I think this this turns on a debate about what condition four meant, uh, and this may come out in the debate. But m but my advice is that 
that committee, having looked at the minutes and the contents of it, I can understand why there was an understanding that it would be that many bungalows. But actually, legally, and obviously this is a quasi judicial uh, committee we're, we're, we're undertaking here. And if this went to an appeal or an inquiry, we have to be clear on this. Legally, that decision notice did not tie us down to the bungalows, in my opinion. It t spoke of the layout, which we are more or less complying with with, this, with these latest drawings. But the matter of scale was a reserved matter. Okay. So I think there's a, a mismatch between what was understood and what was actually decided at the time. Okay. Uh, so, is the, sorry, sorry, can I just interrupt? So the lesson to learn from that, perhaps from what you're saying, is that if we feel that we um, that we believe there's X amount of dwellings of a particular description at outline, we should somehow have that written into the outline that we're expecting 16 or 17 or right. three bungalows. Is yeah, that, is I, that I what think you're saying? Yes. Yes, Chair, I think the, the, the condition would have to the be boat. explicit, yeah. would have to be explicit. And the reason is because there is a condition saying that scale shall be agreed. And that's what right. that's what undermines the issue of the bungalows, I think. So okay. we, we've, we've got to bear a little responsibility yeah. for that. But I think it's a lesson learned and that's a warning to applicants, I think, in the future. Uh, Ian, you wanted to come well, yeah, yeah, Chair, I'll, I'll just come in briefly and say Mark is quite right. I agree with him legally. That's all yeah. I need to say. Yeah, yeah. We have to be legal. We may not yeah. like it, but we have to be legal. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Uh, I've now got uh, Councillor Hinton. Sorry? Chair, I do apologise. May I interrupt? Yep. Councillor McLaren, I believe you're sharing your screen. Would you be able to switch that off, no, please? No, I'm switching it off now. Thank you. Right. And could um, Sarah uh, Carmel, uh, could you turn your camera off, please? Uh, you can still hear us, um, but we can still see you at the moment. That might help clear the that's that's better. Right. Uh, I've now got and you can still hear us, Sarah. Yes. C can the agent still hear us? Yes, yes, I can hear you. Right, good, thank you. Uh Councillor Hinton. Sorry about that, Mr. Chairman. I was just uh, checking up on some some policies because, of course, with what we're dealing with here is Worstead, which is a village, uh, and you'd expect things like CS11 to apply. But in actual fact, it comes under the general the the general policy of the Ipswich Fringe. Um, but this isn't an allocated site within the Ipswich Fringe. Um, the only only sites that are allocated under existing plans are uh, for. Uh, employment use but um the point i i wanted to wanted to wanted to make on this particularly is that one that we've got no housing need the the applicant has admitted that they they haven't got a housing needs they don't do a housing need they base it on their experience at other locations across suffolk hall is quite a long way away from us um and as the county council and all the councils in Suffolk have signed up to a so-called climate emergency, perhaps we ought to be asking our cabinet member for the for uh, the environment to be uh, looking at these things and trying to decide. Uh, sorry about that. The camera nearly fell out. Councillor Hinton, you've gone quiet and frozen. Councillor Hinton. Councillor Hinton, can you hear us? Uh, I have to ask the officer to make a phone call, please. To yes, Councillor Chair, Hinton. I will ask Mandy to uh, Thank help you. me out to get her we'll a call. We'll just uh, freeze from making any comments, members. We'll just sort of wait for this to happen. Peter, Peter, somebody's sharing the screen still. I haven't got full screen. Yeah, there the, the blinking computer fell off the table. Oh, uh, we can hear you, John. Uh, I don't know who's sharing right. the screen, but I've, I've. I believe, Chair, that 
Councillor McLaren, you're still sharing your screen. Right. Uh, Chair Henriette, I just made contact with Councillor Hinton. He says he's um, trying to, he's joining as we speak, apparently. So he will yeah. be joining us shortly. Back Come on, on, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> Sorry about Councillor that. Councillor McLaren, okay. hold on. Clen Councillor McLaren, ha have you unshared no, your... My no, my screen is, is crossed. It's got a cross in it. So I think no, we're... you're sh you're sharing your desktop. So if you go to the um, control panel, yeah. um, to the left of the three buttons, there's one which says share screen. Oh, I see that. Sorry. Yeah, if you click on that and click it off, that's it. That's great. Thank you. Oh, sorry. It's never no happened before. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so we've got there. So that's it. Sorry, John. Oh, we'll now go back to you. Uh, yeah. Sorry about that. No, that's fine. You carry the on now. The fell off. The computer fell off the desk, or half fell off the desk. Um, touch of the fat fingers, I think. Probably the same as Mary with her shared screen, but problem. We've um, still got a frozen picture of you, but we can hear you. Well, that's no. That's wonder why that's frozen. Never mind. Um, I'm not that good looking, so don't worry about that. Uh, Suffolk County Council and all the districts in, in Suffolk have declared a climate emergency and yet here we have a developer who's suggesting that uh, they're building houses on the basis that anyone in Suffolk can go to them, uh, which means of course that uh, we're encouraging commuting and move, movement around the district because they're not exactly going to cycle down the A14 from Hawley. Uh, so we've got a bit of a problem there and uh, within the design and the environmental mediation me measures for this development they're really just playing lip service to building regs uh, rather than in, than uh, showing a way forward in terms of producing houses that are kinder on the environment etc uh, what else have we got here i put here a lack of adherence to the existing local plan because although as i said earlier this is part of the ipswich fringe um it is a village uh and um is not an allocated site within the local plan. So things like CS11, which would cover the housing need, would come onto it. Uh, and they don't obviously have a copy of the local plan. They don't seem particularly interested in having a copy of the local plan, which is interesting. And the other comment was about the pathways, which uh, Sue Ayres, uh, mentioned. Uh, they're talking about a, a perforated membrane with different types of gravel on the top of it well that doesn't make it any easier for a wheelchair or or a pushchair to be pushed through it um so uh, there's another sort of almost brushing off of the uh, the concerns of the, of the committee members and finally i would just say that uh, when we're talking about the open space on this site they're talking about setting up a maintenance company but a larger area of that uh, open space is right next door to the flats which they're not quite sure whether they've got any open space for them to put up clotheslines, et cetera, with them. So there's going to be some sort of requirement for those people to use that area for something or other, even if it's only for spreading their washing out on the line, sort of third world, on the ground, third world style. Uh, so generally speaking, there is not a lot of thought being put forward by the developer to these reserve matters to try and make this site workable, uh, of use to the to the community uh, and attractive to the area. Thank, thank you. Um, uh, I'm going to ask the officer Mark Russell to comment on what, on what you've just heard, what you've just said. Sorry. Thank you. So I just want to address one of the points that Council Hinton raised. Obviously, he raised uh, many valid points, but just that the, the opening um, sentence is about the, the principle of the development. Just to remind members, that the permission exists. Um, so we're there are you know there's a permission for 75 dwellings there so mm. it's it's been allowed in principle we're just now looking at the details I just want to remind members of that that's all yes but uh Councillor Hinton does have quite a few valid points other points Mr. chairman if I could just come back on that yeah Councillor Hinton Councillor Hinton we seem to have lost you again come on get yes. on with it Oh, are, yeah, sorry. Um, as I pointed out earlier on in the meeting, we seem to have been shut out of the conditions on this, and a lot of the conditions are what we're talking about here, and they don't seem to be uh, um, applicable to or, or suitable for the development that we would like to see here. Thank you. Um, any other comments, members? Um, Councillor Busby? Thank you. Well, 
I thought we were here to determine uh, that the application complied with layout and scale. Is that not the case, Mark? Thank, thank you, Councillor Busby. Um, just looking at the um, looking at the decision notes again for well, the, say that. for the hybrid, and I think that it was just for access. Uh, uh, yes, the, the hybrid one, the first one, was for access. Yeah. But yeah. we here today are to confirm layout and scale, aren't we? That's one of the things that we're doing. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. Yeah. Yes, yes. Sorry, that I misunderstood you. Correct. Yes. Yeah. So layout and scale does cover bungalows, pathways. Yes, all of that, all of that. Houses, all of that. So regardless of what we agreed or didn't agree with the first one, yeah. we can say we don't like the mix for whatever reason. We don't like the layout for whatever reason. We don't like the fact there's three stories for whatever reason. You, you can consider all of those things. I was just merely suggesting that, you, that it couldn't be tied to the understanding that there would be bungalows. You now have to look at what's being offered and what's good or bad about it. Yes, correct. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I agree. Although it's it's a, it's a bit like ringing BMW up, isn't it? And ordering your new car, and they're saying yes, we'll we'll have that ready for you in three weeks. And then when you go and get it, it's a Vauxhall. <laughs> it's not quite the same thing, is it? When we've had this application come to us, and Peter's right, the chairman's right, we are going to have to be tighter in what we put in the minutes and get uh, get agreed because outline planning permission. Basically, the way we're treating it at the moment is just a carte blanche to do what they like. And that can't be right. Um, any other members? Well, I have another point oh, as well, Chair. Right, just sorry, a, go on then, yeah. I know we, we didn't do a housing needs survey, but on page um, 26 of the Emerging Local Plan, yeah. it says... The demographic projections identify there is an estimated to be a total of 47,198 households that will be resident in Baber in 2036. This is 1,203 more than the previous of the evidence September 2017. The household type breakdown is as follows. One person, 30.3%. Couple with no children, 35.1%. And then it goes on. So effectively, by... 2036 we expect 65 percent of our population to be either single or just a couple with no children why are we building three and four bedroom houses that's not what they want they want one or two bedroom houses they cut you know so the fact that the i don't see that there is this need as john says it's no use saying well yeah in hawley we sold all the four bedroom houses that's fine I mean, the redesigner, the, the, the agent doesn't want to do a redesign because of the cost. I can understand that. But to say that uh, bungalows are not needed because they don't build them, that's the fourth largest builder in the country. <laughs> you know, if they can't build bungalows, which must be easier than three story blocks of flats. Um, I just don't follow the, the logic behind that. Mm. Um, and the reason, I guess, that Pigeon put 16 bungalows or th whatever it was alongside the eastern boundary, the one that matched uh, was alongside the existing houses in Bourne Hill, was because of a concern that was put forward to them between the parish and the, uh, the councillor that we didn't want them to be overlooked. Mm. And the same applies now. The same applies now. Thank you. Um, any other views? Councillor Barrett. Thank you, Chair. I, I wonder if, if we ever knew how many bedrooms were proposed for these bungalows that were the, in the original plan. And whether it was ever ever uh, ever sort of detailed, um, because if they were mm -hmm. if they were going to be two bedded, and now they're replaced by three bedded houses, that is also quite a material difference, um, because it's it increases the overall you know um, number of people on that site quite a bit, and and built um, uh, 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 you know uh, size of uh, of buildings. And appearance, so appearance is, is altered, layouts altered, scales altered. 
Um, it seems that the original uh, approval was for something quite different. And I, I think it might not have been detailed in uh, a legal agreement, but there was a, a principle uh, and an understanding. Um, and I think that probably should be respected by the developer. Um, uh, I think I have to remind you that we have to deal with what's in front of us, although I, 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 I'm of the view um, uh, and that I understand where both you and Councillor Busby are coming from. Um, Chair, I can uh, answer the question that about the, there were the open market bungalows and there were 13 were all two bed. Yes. Um, but I don't know whether any of that was in detail in the outline. Uh, Mark, um, Mr. Russell, can Certainly you help? In detail on the, on the plan. Yeah. Um, Mark, can you help? I think the easiest answer is to repeat myself from earlier. Probably yeah. there may have been a drawing showing that and that, that fed the understanding that, that Councillor Busby is now describing. But again, we come back to the it's the layout. It's the same layout. I think it just really points out that we must be sure to outline in future uh, that to get this really clarified and sewn up if that's the feeling that we want certain types of dwellings. Anyway, um, any new comments by members? No? Um, well, we need to um, move forward um, on this. So, um, members, well, there's no proposal coming forward, so you leave me in the... Chair, yeah. may I just interrupt there? I believe Councillor Barrett was attempting to speak then. Am I right? Oh, apologies. I thought it looked like you were saying something. <laughs> that, that leaves me uh, in the position that um, we need to move on. So I'm going to have to reluctantly, and I'm going to say the words reluctantly, move the officer's recommendation. Um so, uh, do I have a seconder? No. Right, fine. So now I have to put it back to you, members. There's no seconder. So um, I, I do need one of you to come forward. I'll come forward and second it, Thank just you. so we can have the debate. I mean, I, yeah. I'm not convinced that we have enough reason to turn it down. I'd like to, because it's not what I... Right, well, I wonder, let me just ask the load through legal and Mark, can we defer this so that we can have a discussion with the applicant further? Or do you think that isn't possible? After you go first, Mark. I, I think that's an option that we should explore, um, Chair, if, if right. members aren't minded to go with the officer's recommendation today. I, I'd, I'd like to unpick exactly which elements we're looking at. Yep. Yep. Um, I think we've gone a little bit into the market housing side. I'm not sure whether we want to go too far down that line. Um, but you've possibly referred to um, the location of the of the affordable. That's come up in conversation, whether that should be looked at. I don't I don't know which elements you would like to be yeah. revisited. Perhaps yeah. that clarified. Well, uh, I, I think the elements, and we can discuss this in a moment, is the bungalows, is the affordable, is the um, footpath system. Um, and I think there was a concern with Park and the Councillor Barrett um, comment on very early. So they, they, may be, they may be areas you want to um look at members um ian is there anything you want to advise us before um, i go I through I them mark has put it very well for myself so i don't need to add anything right. at this stage unless you've got a members have any questions for me yeah now if we go for a deferment so that the officers can have a discussion with the applicant members what do you want to um put forward for discussion review um consideration Councillor um, Barrett, yes. I'll start with you. Busby, sorry, I'll start with you. Well, I think the main thing, I know Mark said about the uh, open market, but it is by far the largest proportion of the housing that's going to be built there. And as I mentioned, 90% that are over three or four bedroom houses is, isn't the, doesn't reflect the kind of mix that we need. Um, and I think, quite mm. frankly, if we could go back to that... Uh, original layout where the two bedroom bungalows are alongside the eastern boundary um i think that would make it a much better 
development, I think there does need to be some space around the uh, affordable flats so that they can do things like drying clothes. At the moment, it doesn't yeah. look like there's anywhere to do that kind of thing. And it is that it's the devil's in the detail with these things. I know it's only a small issue, but if you've got to live with it all the time, if we haven't catered for these kind of things, then the place looks like a tip. And they get a bad reputation. And it's down to poor design, not their living standards. Right. So, 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 so it's those small things, I think. No. So I've got mix. I've got flats outside space. Uh, yeah. I've got Councillor Plum who's got his hand up. So I'll go to you next. Thank you, Chair. Um, I'll go back to the point of trying to pepper pot the affordable. Right. Yeah, good. Affordable. Uh, pepper pot. Um, yeah. Um, right. Uh, I've got Councillor Ayres. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Again, it's that pathway. If you look at slide 32, um, it's quite a long pathway. And I do feel um, for push chairs, wheelchairs, bicycles, whatever, mm -hmm. really that needs to be considered. I don't think it's suitable. Right, I've made a note of that as well. Um, I've got Councillor Hinton. Thank you, Mr. Ch Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes, I, I was going to mention the surface treatment of, of pathways, yes, uh, which Sue's, Sue's already brought up. Um, but also, I think that that boundary treatment to the 137, uh, all the way along its length of, of the site up to where it joins up to the um, ski slope complex, etc., needs looking at as well. Because as I said earlier, we put a given permission for a fast food outlet at the top of that hill and people are not going to walk all the way around the outside of the site no. down to the bottom of the hill and then all the way up the up the side of the hill to get to it they're going to cut across the road and if we're not careful we're going to see people and burgers splattered all over the place all right um the councillor jameson uh, uh, thanks yeah, just can we also get some more get the um, applicant to put in some more specifics on environmental measures they're gonna they can have on their properties? Um, specifics on environment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lovely. Uh, ra rather than just the biodiversity, actually, what they're gonna do with the properties themselves? Yeah, it seems very basic what they were suggesting. Yeah, well, they're, yeah. yeah, but they seem to skirt the um, topic. So yeah, that would be good. Yeah, right. Thank you. Um, Councillor Hinton, your hands up. Did you want to come back? Yes, just basically on the on that uh, environmental issue. Of course, uh, whether it be on uh, water catchment within the within the site for uh, recycling water for uh, brown water brown water use. Um, but all right, these are close to a flood area, and we know that a lot of the properties along the bottom of um, Worsted Strand there get flooded. Uh, so there's often too much water about, but it's the wrong sort of water. Uh, and drinking water supply across Suffolk, uh, and particularly East Suffolk, is getting to be quite a scarce commodity with all the development we're doing. Uh, water pressures are steadily falling off. Uh, mm. And anything we can do to sort of encourage developers to put in water conservation um, systems, the better. Thank you. Yes. You have great knowledge on the water situation, so that's very helpful. Um, but there's no other hands up. I've got down one, two, three, four, five, six um, things, and I'll just read them out in case um, uh, the mix. And we are also referring to the um, occupancy of those um, dwellings that are proposed. And we are concerned of the lack of bungalows, I think, would be picked up in that. Flats outside space, particularly for um, drying of clothes and what have you. Um, the affordables are not pepper potted, um, uh, not all together. They should be moved all throughout the site. Um, the environment um, and water recycling, that was another point. And the pathway surface treatment and um, the other aspect that Councillor Hinton referred to going over the main road. Uh, those are bits I've picked up. 
Mark, um, hopefully you've been writing these down. Can you put them into some sort of sensibility for us, please? Yeah, I, I concur with that list. I'll just go through them. I want to revisit the first one in a minute, but just yeah. for the moment, the, the list was the bungalow. The, sorry, was the mix, including yeah. a bungalow consideration. Yeah. Uh, space around the flats um, to pepper pot the affordable pathways yeah. because of wheelchairs, etc. Boundary treatments, the L137. Uh, environmental measures, which included solar panels and, and grey water. Yeah. Now, now, the first one on the mix, um, yeah. I've, I've shared my opinion on the on the bungalow part of that. I, I don't know what the committee's aspirations are for, for this mix. Um, there was a suggestion by Councillor Busby there were too many four-bedders, for example. It's all towards the, the larger number of bedrooms rather than. Um, I, I think we're going to have to go away and consider the policy position on that and 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 uh, well, we're going to come back at some point. Um, we're going to have to consider what the policy position is on insisting on smaller dwellings. I mean, that there is there is a housing needs survey. There there is some scope to look at this and to and to answer Councillor Busby's concern. I can't promise we'll come back with everything you want, but no. we, we'll look um, at it. on the bungalows um, at the moment in the new emerging local plan, yeah. um, we, we've um, said three percent uh, yeah. uh, that we're looking at. And uh, this is actually. Uh, yeah, uh, because we haven't got any at the moment. Um, so 3%, they've gone plan it safe. Uh, the, the, this application actually offers 4% in fairness yeah. to them. Um, but I think I, I think they need to do a PR relationship. The general feeling of the parish council, the general feeling of members um, was that there was going to be more than three bungalows. And I think that's that's the point we want to get over. Um, yeah, 16 and 17 would be wonderful, but I do understand. And I think w members will have to understand that. But certainly three looks like they're taking the mickey. All right. Well, well, we, we, we've we've heard the points you, you, you've raised, Chair. If, if the committee agrees, we'll come back at a subsequent committee, which probably, given the amount there, is going to be later than we thought. Right. So, Chair, uh, what, sorry, what, Chair. Uh, yes? Can I just say the, the point about the mix? It's it's the disparity between the local plan saying it looks like 65% of our population yeah. require two bedrooms or less, mm -hmm. and the open market delivery is 9%. Okay. That's the gap that we need to, uh, to narrow by having more yeah. two-bedroom houses or bungalows, preferably bungalows. Mm -hmm. And I think the 3%... That is a figure that needs to be argued over for our local plan. I'm not certain that just refers to affordable housing or whether it's across the board so I, I think we need to be careful about pitching too much importance on that three percent all right uh, we'll check the policy position for you and what's up to date in the spd and everything like that councillor and um and we'll consider that right uh before uh, uh so i'm going to need a proposal in a second at the moment well, Ch but, chairman if I, if I may please interrupt yep. sorry it's, it's yep. legal advisor i think I, i'm looking to mrs philpop for agreement on this to claire i think we did have a proposal and a second and, and a seconder for uh, the officer's um, recommendation. No, you didn't get a seconder. But I think, I, oh, well, I mean, I yeah, think yeah, we did. Yeah, we did. So yeah. I think it, it really, I think it needs um, you or Councillor Busby to officially change your mind and say you no longer want to do that. Um, Sorry, I did not get a seconder to my proposal. Councillor Busby. Councillor yeah, Busby. I, I said I'd second it so we could open the debate. Ah, sorry, I didn't hear that. Right. But I'm happy to change my mind and That's fine. Uh, so propose if Councillor, that we defer. Councillor Busby is, is withdrawing his his uh, his right. wish. I take to your pardon, Councillor Busby. I didn't so that, that's fine. There right. is no. There, so the, the 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 chairman's proposal that we approve in accordance with the with the officer's recommendation is falls for lack of a seconder. Correct. Uh, uh, I'm just checking. Uh, Mrs. Philpot, are you happy with that? Yes, thank you. Right. Okay. Yeah, so we, we now we can now have a further different. Yeah. So now I must ask someone to propose what you've heard said by Mark, and I'll get him to read it out. And then would somebody like to propose that? Mark, will you read it out again, please? Yes. So what, what we we've suggested to you. There are six points. Uh, the top one was uh, to revisit the mix, including looking at bungalows. Uh, second was to look at space around the flats. The third <gasps> third was to. Um, Look at pepper potting the affordable. Fourth was pathways um, for use of wheelchairs, etc., uh, i.e., not gravel. Um, fifth was boundary treatments, the A137. And finally, environmental measures, including things such as solar panels and grey water. 
Thank you. Um, so you're, you're, somebody is proposing a deferment yeah. uh, for the officers to look into those with discussions with the applicant. Councillor yeah. Busby? I'm prepared to propose that, Chair. Thank you. Do I have a seconder? I'm prepared to second it, Mr Chairman. Thank you. Councillor Hinton seconded it. Is there any uh, um, comments or debate on that? <coughs> no. Uh, Councillor Barrett? May I just say about the pathways? Surely there's a, a, a standard uh, of a pathway that is suitable for uh, wheelchair use uh, and a buggy use and so on that we can adhere to without it having to be tarmacked because if you tarmac it then it becomes very urban looking and if it's going through the green area you want to try and retain that sort of element it's a bit more rustic so isn't there some 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 pathway that can achieve both i'm sure um, there is mark uh, the thing that, that sprung to mind was something like a bonded gravel. So it would visually look the same, but wouldn't move about and would be easier to wheel um, wheelchairs over, etc. That was my thought. Mm. So there is room for some movement there. So that would be taken on board. Now, oh, I've seen some of those, quite a few hands gone up now. Councillor Osborne. Yeah, th uh, thank you, Mr Chairman. Yeah, um, on, on Melanie's um, uh, position on, on the footpaths, Surely the permeable surface has got to be looked at on this because of uh, fl flood risks, etc., and, and water um, uh, problems. So, you know, you need a permeable surface, not tarmac. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Ayres. Thank you, Chair. Um, I would suggest that we contact the um, the special woodland that we have behind the key theatre because they have pathways there that are suitable for push chairs, wheelchairs, whatever. Um, so I can contact them if need be. Thank you. Thank you. I'm sure if you pass that information on to um, the officer Russell, um, that would be most helpful. Um, right. There's no other hands gone up. Then um, I've had a proposal to defer the application for more discussions with the applicant for the following reasons that's already been set out. Proposed by Councillor Busby, seconded by Councillor Hinton. Uh, I will now ask for a roll call. Um, can you take us through that, Claire? Thank you, Chair. When I call your names, if you could um, answer for, against or abstain. Councillor Sue Ayres. For. Councillor Melanie Barrett. For. Councillor Peter Beer. For. Councillor Dave Busby. For. Councillor John Hinton. For. Councillor Lee Jameson. For. Councillor Mary McLaren. For. Councillor Adrian Osborne. For. <clears throat> Councillor Alison Owen. For. And Councillor Stephen Plum. For. Why be different? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That's very unanimous, much. Chair. Uh, yes, I agree. Unanimous. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Uh, <clears throat> that is the situation. Uh, uh, sorry, Chair, for the record, I didn't catch who, who was the uh, seconder for that one. Uh, Councillor H John Hinton. John Hinton, thank you. And it wasn't because I twisted Councillor Plum's arm either. No. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, right, so we've had that. Um, so we've got to the end of the plan and meet and members. Uh, this will come back to us in due course. Um, I'd like to thank you for minutes, all... minutes, Chair. Oh yes, that's right. Thank you. Well done. Uh, can we go back to the second part? Let me get the paperwork. Uh, minutes of the meeting held on July the 29th. Have you had a chance to have a look at it? Hopefully, you did in that break. Yeah. Yeah. Um, can I have a proposal that we accept the minutes? I propose, Chair. That's Councillor Ayres. Do I have a seconder? I'll second it. Yeah, I'll second it. That's seconded uh, by Councillor Owen. Right. Any comments? No? All those in favour that we accept? Oh, no, we go have a roll call, sorry. Um, can you do the roll call again? Um... Yes, thank you, Chair. Councillor Sue Ayres. Um, yes. Councillor Melanie Barrett. Four. Councillor Peter Beer. Four. Councillor Dave Busby. Four. 
Councillor John Hinton. For. Councillor Lee Jamieson. For. Councillor Mary McLaren. For. Councillor Adrian Osborne. For. Councillor Alison Owen. For. Councillor Stephen Plum. For. Again. Thank you, Chair. That's unanimous. Is that correct? Can I have it confirmed? Yes, yeah. that's unanimous, Chair. Yeah, unanimous, Chair. Thank you. It's been um, confirmed. Right, members, thank you very much for your attendance and enjoy the rest of your day.